it's Mark Walsh here with my colleagues Paul, Vilja and Catalina. We are in beautiful uh, Russian countryside today. We've been working for about five days on various embodiment issues with different students. Um, one of the things that always comes up is gender, gender in relation to posture, uh, the different ways men and women are taught to stand. Um, so maybe you could um, kind of model how the kind of uh, average American man and Russian woman is kind of shown to uh, to stand. So um, there's variations of this, obviously. But Paul, you look like you're sort of thrusting out the chest a bit there, tightening the musculature. Yeah, and I should be thrusting other things, but when I tighten the chest, I can't. <laughs> okay. And kind of what, how, as, as women, are you taught by the media, by advertising that you should be standing? We're just going to do one variation there. Oh, okay, got it. So you've narrowed the base, so there's less stability. Paul's kind of widened his. Uh, and there's, there's a kind of kink in the system, so you're not kind of on the vertical axis, right? So everything's slightly off to the side. And again, the narrow base, the Katarina there. And uh, anything else you want to say about that? Oh, it's really unstable. So it's unstable, it's slightly twisted as well, I think. And a lot of tension to do all these things right. and uh, uh, the chest up and like uh, the sort of boobs out thing we had the other day from right. someone, didn't we? The kind of perky boobs yeah. thing. Yeah. yeah. Katarina, anything you want to add? Oh, so there's the leg cross. This is the Russian leg cross, yeah. which is it used to only exist in ballet, and then through ballet it moved to Russian culture, and now we see it in young women all across Western Europe and America too. Uh, and obviously, it's a pretty dysfunctional posture. We're wait, going to test. Wait, wait, you have to say dysfunctional for what? Okay, what's it dysfunctional for? Well, for being safe, open, and protecting yourself. It's very functional. If I want her to be a pushover. <laughs> okay, so let's test a couple of these postures. So, um, if, as we've seen, this very unstable posture. Could you stand in a kind of what you've found to be a functional, strong way, Vila, the, the kind of postural alignment and relaxation? That is. Okay, great. This is how you generally stand these days, right? Yeah. So, Paul, if, if it really doesn't mind, is it okay if he gives you another little, another little nudge there? Okay. So it's a much more stable Ooh. posture. <laughs> Quite a strong push strong there. Guy. <laughs> it doesn't now stand like a woman. Uh, yeah, right. There you go. That's what I wanted. A pushover. Okay, well, so I don't want it, but somebody must. So we, we, what we see here is that kind of um, women become pushovers, literally in the culture. And what about men? What do men become? Because it's, it's not like we get such a good deal either. Do you want to push him around a bit, Vilya, if he's up for that? Yes, of course. Okay. If I'm stiff, I can't adjust. So lack of flexibility. Yeah, lack of mobility and flexibility. And stand in a more, when we might say, centered way, so with more balance. Yes, of course. I can adjust if I have to. And you can also... Or I could yield. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so so men are losing that sort of flexibility. It actually is also weak as well, right? right. Even if it seems strong, uh, it's not particularly helpful. So, um, yeah, we see these variations in advertising. It's kind of taught. I noticed my niece, even at five years old, had picked up right. quite a lot of them, and she was beautifully functional up till about three or four. There's, you know, the spine and the head, everything nicely aligned. Um, Anything else you want to say about the, the kind of experience internally of, of these postures? Because I know you've been through a kind of journey with this and, you know, these cultural factors too. Like in Russia, it's even more pronounced, I would say, than... Uh, for me, uh, I spent a lot of time uh, trying to be perfect. Mm -hmm. And it means I have nobody, I have uh, upright spine, I'm uh, narrow. And I'm elegant. And okay. I move like... And you're a tango teacher as well, right? Yeah. Or at least you were. So that's that's another factor here. Yeah. Yes. And uh, I'm aware of all the time if I'm okay, mm -hmm. if or if I'm enough beautiful. Mm -hmm. And it, it's a lot of time and a lot of uh, power to and forced to, to do this. It's a tyranny, right? In, in your own body, it's literally... Do you remember we had an Irish colleague and she was visiting and you made yeah, her stand yeah. like a Russian woman and she felt... How did she feel? I remember it's like scared and tired and just the effort involved in holding yourself yeah. the whole time like that. Yeah, yeah. what about you, Ekaterina? An undoubtedly <laughs> elegant and beautiful Russian woman. Is there a way to be... This is the fear we see in students here but everywhere is people think, oh, I'll be ugly. Mm -hmm. 
if I'm strong. You know, this is the fear we see in students, right? They're like, but if I don't stand like this, then I'll be unattractive. Mm -hmm. yeah. So maybe you could speak a little bit to the kind of beauty aspect of this. I think the, the first uh, point is this position. Mm -hmm. We are so afraid about uh, our wide. Taking wide, up wide, space as well, right? Wide, wide, yeah. right? And about taking space. We talk about man spreading, but it's just mm -hmm. the opposite. Yeah. And it uh, looks like a very mas mas masculine. Mm -hmm. yeah, not woman. Mm -hmm. so there's an association that to yeah. look like a woman, you have to look I, weak. A woman. And yeah. what's interesting that I've experienced is, is though actually people get more beautiful to most people's eyes, though perhaps not to predatory eyes, uh, when they become relaxed and centered and open. Like, um, can we, like, uh, Paul, you speak about this sometimes, don't you? Like, you actually, you know, we. If you have a healthy, ethical sexuality, of course you find someone more attractive if they're strong, open and strong. Right? And the problem is, you are more beautiful when you're weak. But to whom would you really want to be with a person who found you attractive because you were weak? I would hope not, but many people do. And, and we actually do this as an exercise where people kind of go into the habitual, kind of culturally reinforced gendered embodiments. And then we do more centered and open and radiant and, and just everyone goes, wow, where did all these kings and queens and beautiful people come from? You know, so could you be willing to do that now? So let's let's see uh, if we can make you more or less attractive uh, to someone with a healthy sense of that. Well, I will pretend I'm not attractive to bugs, but you just have one in my eye. Okay, stands in a beautiful fashion. Uh, just yeah. cultured stereotype. Of course, you know what I'm thinking about. What am I thinking about? There's only one thing that anybody would think about in a woman, of course. So how does that make you feel? Ouch. <laughs> Could I borrow you for a minute? <laughs> I'm going to consume you. Mm -hmm. Now, open your body. Let your throat open. Let your back open. Let your chest cave in just a little bit. Yeah, touch. Yeah. Let your chest hang. There mm -hmm. you go. Good. Feels wrong, doesn't it? Yeah, like... Uh, yeah, right. Let it hang. What happens to your posture? Build it. Almost nothing. I can't thank you too much. Mm -hmm. Now, be beautiful. Yeah, right. She loses <laughs> her contact <laughs> with her body. Yeah. And, and if I get strong, mm -hmm. the same thing happens to me, but in a different way. I'm stiff and I can't move. Yeah, it's kind of like no one wins from this setup in a way. Oh yeah, the uh, government wins. <laughs> and Go governments always win. So it's people talk about empowerment and you know, you know, teaching. You know, I'm teaching my niece to be able to say no and these kind of you know healthy practices. But if the body is not there to back that up, first of all, psychologically people won't be able to do it. But then also just you know, just physically, there's also a, you know an issue there. Um, but it puts people into a kind of a mindset of either being pushy or a pushover of being a kind of vic uh, there's a sort of victim embodiment that's there and and you can sort of sell it like Paul is in a way of saying look it makes you stronger but what I would say is it also just makes you more attractive like like and sometimes people need to hear that or see that perhaps um so like um do do drab do like the kind of shy person who's kind of this kind of gone in is that yeah and like it's not particularly attractive to almost anyone I would say and now do radiant which is also stronger. So that sense of shining, of extending in different directions. And for me, that's immediately like, wow, how beautiful. Yeah. So I don't, I don't see this as a trade off. That's people think, well, I have to be weak, but beautiful, or I can be strong, but ugly or masculine, they might say. Um, and I think there's actually a way to be uh, strong and attractive in that way. So it's, it's, it's nice to see that. Any final comments from any of you? Gender, culture, anything at all? I prefer to be like that. <laughs> if I do a, a, an experiment with people, I will often have them lie down on their back and spread their legs, that's a loaded phrase, and I stand between their legs and they feel very vulnerable. I show them that they just do that, going against the knee and the ankle, I can be pushed down easily with no effort and no strength. The, the ability to be present is 
so strong that it doesn't feel like you're working to stay safe. Mm -hmm. And the, the demonstration of being open is actually more safe. Like as, yes. as martial artists, you don't want to have you like, do you want to quickly demo that? Like the arms crossed? If people are feeling defensive, I will say, can you show me a defensive posture? Defensive posture. May I? Yeah. This is a hypothesis, really. If I have a barrier, if I have a wall, nobody can get through. And then I say, open up, open your insides, and put your arms forward a bit. What do you do if I try to touch you? Yeah. Here. I'll go for this one. <laughs> yeah. We can deal with it. Too well trained already. So, so it's so it's this idea and it's, it's very sad when I see someone who maybe is you know physically beautiful and they've ended up sort of closing because they've had unpleasant experiences often you know men to women but sometimes the other way around but often men to women and this closure actually doesn't help them from the point of view of safety you know um, so yeah it does feel safe yeah I've had students who actually said literally I'd rather feel safe and be unsafe than to open up and feel vulnerable yeah. even though I know it works better they can't stand the feeling yeah. it has to be gradually changed so that you identify openness and softness as a source of power so openness and softness as a source of power that's something I know I could uh, sell to many uh, uh, many of the women I know certainly you know it's like hey this is this is a way to be powerful and beautiful and strong and open and all that good stuff um, there's cultural factors here that we've talked about a few times, haven't there? But it's, it's what I see in Russia is a sort of more extreme version of just what I see all over the world. Um, They're sort of humans like the rest of us. <laughs> sort of humans like the rest of us. One thing I'd say just to end this video as well is we're all colleagues that have known each other for some years. So we don't work quite this way. This is, you know, pushing each other around without quite being as careful as we might working with new students. Um, so, you know, just, just under, underline the fact that we all know each other a bit. Anything to finish from you two? <laughs> you are. <laughs> okay, thank you very much, everybody.